Call the meeting to order. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delore, to resolve the agenda for the September 5th, 2017 regular meeting. Council will proceed. Discussion? All in favor? Carry. <clears throat> motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delore, to resolve the minutes for the July 18th, 2017 regular meeting. Council be adopted and received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Okay. Item four on your agenda under the delegations and hearing. We have Heather and Stacy from Rise. Welcome to our council meeting, ladies. Thank you. I'll um, just turn it over to you. There you go. Thank you. Tis that time of year again. Figured we'd come and give you a little bit of update on what we've been doing. We haven't been here for a little while and have a little bit of conversation on where we can keep moving stuff forward. We'll cover tourism last because even though that is our main focus, it's probably what we're going to be talking about the most. Um, we have had some new businesses and some new uh, business owners been approaching us, some for existing businesses, some for new ones, so we're still working with that kind of stuff. We are getting more interested in food commercialization, but we seem to be running into a lot of roadblocks. Um, we're waiting to have a meeting with Lana. We had one scheduled and it didn't work out to find out exactly what we can do in this kitchen. We've had people come and talk about how they're being sent to Winnipeg or to Portage and they're being bounced back and forth and they just don't know. Um, I know when I go to economic development forums and stuff, that's where a lot of egg stuff is going, a lot of the entrepreneurial and, and add-ons. So I'm really hoping that um, we can do a little bit more there and further and help people develop that kind of stuff. Uh, healthcare advancement. Um, new doctors and stuff. We haven't been involved very much in that except to um, help with a little bit of the whining and dining, provide baskets and that kind of thing. Long-term care. We've, we've got a separate committee set up um, that I'm sitting on for long-term care. We have approximately, well as of October, August 11th, there's 34 applicants for long-term care that are sort of out there and not getting the care that they need. Um, there's 12 in the community. There's eight that are already paneled that have been shipped out of town, which has families quite distressed on how to, how to bring them back. Um, we've been looking at different alternatives. Rick Wojcik's office has been fantastic. Val sits on the committee with me. Um, very much helps get us into the provincial level. Um, kind of think that Manitoba housing might definitely be a way to go. There's um, there's no chance we're going to get another facility. Like, they're not going to spend that kind of money to build a new facility. But there's a lot of talk around the community about Manitoba housing vacancies and how there is a ton of vacancies out there. I've tried to talk to Manitoba housing here, um, been told that's not true. There's two people in Bozeman right now in a 10 unit. So that's a pretty high vacancy rate. So I have contacted the province, and due to summer holidays and everything, um, we just keep emailing, I keep reminding and I keep being told, yes, I'm gonna get it. And Because if we can convert a Manitoba housing unit, say in Bozeman, for example, to sort of at least be able to block home care, because there's no block home care anymore, so the home care workers are, are going from client to client to client all around. So there's a lot of wasted time and expense with mileage. So if maybe we could at least do that, we could allevi alleviate some of the, um, the level twos and maybe even a level three, I doubt it, but at least some of the level twos could at least be placed in a relatively more secure, safe environment. So we're waiting to do that. We've been doing all kinds of community building things, lots of, um, lots of networking. Um, this fall, we've scheduled meetings with all the municipalities, including the Benito LUD. Um, CAOs are great by sending me information, and, and, and the conversation that goes back and forth is awesome. The Swan Valley Outdoors Association, um, I have talked to Ward. I'm eagerly waiting to see when they have their next meeting so that we can go to that. There's a lot of overlap with, with tourism and whatnot because of the Frank Marvin Center and what they want to do to develop that out there. There's some new grants coming out. Um, every CAO sent me an email, which was great. Okay. 
Um, we did distribute it out to a whole pile of other committees and whatnot, so that hopefully there will be more. We at RISE are applying for the Partner for Growth grant um, in partnership with Swan Valley Sport Fish Enhancement. Um, we want to develop trails. When we did our, our, our regional economic analysis, tourism was identified. When we did our tourism development plan, trails were identified. Um, we're all about trails around here, but nobody knows about them. Nobody knows how to get to them, where to go. Um, Stacy will talk a little bit more about that. Um, park, Manitoba, Travel Manitoba and Parkland Tourism, there's a lot of money provincially right now being put into tourism, which is exciting to know that we already have our REAP done and our tourism development plan done. Um, Travel Manitoba has contacted us because Minister Cullen took our, travel, our tourism development plan down to Winnipeg with him. So they're going to be coming up here in October, which is awesome. Um, tourism in Manitoba supports over 20,000 jobs, 625.1 million in annual tax revenues. So it's, it's, it's big business. Um, they're saying that in the parkland, not Manitoba, but in parkland, there's 467,000 visitors and $53 million spent. Um, Parkland is getting 4% of everything in, in the whole province, which doesn't sound like a lot, but there hasn't been a whole lot of marketing done yet. Um, we are pushing that big time. Where do they spend their money? Number one is food and beverage, number two is transportation, and number three is retail. It's very much an economic engine. Um, a lot of money being spent with the province and Travel Manitoba to be able to um, to develop that more because that's just money coming into the province. With the, do you all know the 96 4 plan? Um, nope, okay. Um, for years, Travel Manitoba got $7 million from the province and it was the same for years and years. So Manitoba Chambers of Commerce wanted to change that but just going asking for an increase, they, nothing was ever getting done. So what they did was they came up with a 96 4 plan and um, so out of 100% revenue, the province get 96%, Travel Manitoba gets 4%. So that jumped it from a $7 million to 11 right there in that first year. So now Travel Manitoba is being very aggressive because the more money the province makes, the more money they make as well, which is great. Stacy's been at the um, tourism booth all summer. Quite a learning experience, a lot of tourists coming through, um, crazy amount of tourists coming through. We are, we just keep thinking that um, it needs to be staffed. You know, we've tried to apply for grants, Chamber can't get grants for staffing. So I don't know how, as a valley, we can approach that. Um, it definitely benefits the entire valley. People drive into Swan River and then Stacy sends them all over the place, and it is hopping in there. Absolutely hopping. Ready? Okay, so like you say, the place is packed. The tourism center is packed all the time. It's steady, 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 steady. Um, lots of people dropping off and getting water and dropping all the other stuff. So they're all coming in and having chats. And also this year, because the church hill has been uh, reduced for travel up there, the railroad. Lots of folks already have tickets. I've got people coming in from Switzerland and Germany and England, all through the US that already have those flights to get here. So they're coming here through, up through Winnipeg and this is kind of their stop to figure out where to go next. So we said we'll spend lots of time at Wildman. We talked about the difference between pork and ducks and what kind of level of camping and what kind of level of adventure they're looking for. After that, most of them, I send them up to the Dawson Bay area, Barrows, um, and then head them up towards the Flintstone area. And now too, we were down in um, Thompson, being able to really connect with those guys and being able to talk about how we can connect with the Look North because we're kind of like the weird stepsisters right now. The South doesn't really want us and the North doesn't really want us. And we started to really build a strong relationship with the North. So now they're like, hey, we want you to come hang out with us. 
how can we work together to send people your way and we continue to send people our way. So the tourism guide also is completed and distributed. That's this one here. And I actually have eight boxes left have had amazing feedback on it. Um, and with this too, this is another way I've really been trying to connect with like Blues Lakes and Child's Lakes and really starting to expand that. And they're really excited that they're mentioned in here and want to continue to work with us more closely and how we can expand all the trails. Um, one of the strange things is that um, one of our barriers is getting ATV trails, but Blues Lake actually government has given them money for that. And they've expanded that in the Mossbury, the old Mossbury hiking trail. So that's something we're sort of looking into and saying how come and why and how can we kind of steal your ideas and move forward with that. Um, so we have advertising in the Parkland Guide, which we always had a bit in there, but now we've sent in instead of maybe five things, we, I sent in about three pages this year. So we're in almost every single section, like every single page in the Parkland. We have two photo contests that are going on. So this is Swan Valley, and the other one is Trails, Trails, Trails. So we want people to take pictures when they're on those trails or anywhere whatsoever in the valley and send them in. And there's different prizes you can win for those. And businesses have been pretty great about really stepping up and saying, like, here's a $50 gift yeah, card. Yeah, we're getting donations or, for it. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. We tried to do, um, oh, we're researching the mapping in the valley with the help of the hiking groups, which we start a hiking group now. We started doing, uh, trying to support the Thunder Hill because they've done amazing work up there with their trails. And so we did most of those uh, museum trail and then started um, kind of spreading that hiking group out a little bit further. And through there, they're taking their GPSs for us and mapping out everything and every place that they go. Along with that, we have Sport Fish Enhancement doing the same thing because lots of their job, they're already in the bushes, they're already on those trails, so they're starting to um, um, keep track of that and, and keep information about how that's going to go. Experiential tourism, so we planned for June 17th to Kettle Hills, but due to rain we cancelled that. But I do have a letter of approval from West Quisa Peak uh, authorizing our travel through there, so it has been approved by the, the Chief and Council there. July 22nd was a pretty valley tour, and it was amazing. We got great feedback from that, from everybody that attended. Travel Manitoba, we talked about that a little bit. Minister Colin um, contacted them to come here and have a little visit. So they're gonna be here on October 3rd and 4th. So the evening of the 3rd, we're gonna do a tour around the valley, and then the evening of the 4th, there's gonna be a community presentation from Travel Manitoba here at the Legion and you're, well, I'll be welcome to come and check that out. And there'll be an official invite to coming from Travel Manitoba himself for you. Um, what else, what else, what else? Contacting and sharing ideas and materials with US Fans of 83 Facebook. So there's a Facebook page called Highway 83, Fans of Highway 83. And there's a particular gentleman named Stu, Stu Magnuson, and he has written lots of books about Highway 83. <clears throat> so we're looking into how we can kind of buddy with him better He's taken some of our ideas and actually um, Mr. McKenzie sent out some pictures and they kind of looked at those pictures and kind of playing with that as well. So that's kind of neat. Um, in conversation with Rob, and I can never say this word, but I can't either. Okay, Meditifium. The parks, guy. parks, the parks guy. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> I appreciate you. <laughs> in reference to proper quad trails and the ducks, so we talked about that. Um, there was a study done actually in 2010 that we're revisiting with him. You were on that committee doing Once Upon a Time in 2010, yeah. And then you, so he's kind of looking into where that's at in the paperwork land and where it got to and how it got that far and how we can start building those up again and what that might look like to do so. So yeah, I think that's about it. Would you have any questions or any comments questions or, or comments, concerns? Comments or uh, this is, you were talking about the tourist the amount of people coming to the yes. tourist uh, information area there. Are we taking any stats or have you had time to take stats, I guess, to see Not where people really. are from and how There's we... a guest book if they remember. Yes, and honestly, I would say on average there'd be at least 20 like vehicles of people coming through there and that would be just an average. Some like days a little bit more. Day. Like daily. Yeah, so it's my crazy. entire job. Yeah. Honestly, so for most of the summer, my entire job, so it's half, it's part-time chamber, part-time rise, I'm just doing tourism. That's it. Walk, you know, walking people through different sorts of things. This is also actually one of the newer ones that just came out. This couple got together, and I had seen that sign my whole life, but I didn't know what it was. 
So this couple got back together and did this booklet this year, and it actually starts in Winnipeg and goes all up into these great little tiny towns. And it, in the booklet, it talks about all the kind of cool stuff to do in all these little places and spaces. And so, so yeah, have to have to we have again. almost a full page on here as well. So something to think about. These anyways. are being, he put out in 2017, 20,000 copies of this. Mm -hmm. um, people are loving this magazine loving. because it's got such a simple map and it leads you all the way across into BC. Um, and they like it because it's off the beaten path a little bit. It's not the same always. It's not, it's not highway one. one. It's not, you know, so it's a bit different. So that's been accepted really, really well. But yeah, it's packed. That's all I'm doing is helping people, supporting people. There's days, there's questions. a dozen people using the dump station there. Mm -hmm. You see them lined up. It's unbelievable how many people dump over there. And fill with water. And fill with water. Yeah. Yeah, and then, so yeah, all on my side, lots of picnicking, lots of questions, so yeah, that's exciting, really good. Thanks for watching. Just a couple of calls. thank you for your presentation, appreciate it, you're doing a lot of super work. This is awesome, I've shared it with people from different parts of the world, our Thai friends, for example, I've taken it back to Thailand with them to share. This park Makes you want to live here, doesn't it? Hmm? <laughs> Makes you want to live here. Exactly. This Parkland <laughs> Trout Fishers book, because I'm going to try and arrange to get into Swan River, because it's not here yet. It talks about Swan River Lake, Glad, East Blue, they're all in here. These guys host an international competition mm -hmm. throughout you know, the world. It, it's, this is a big deal of trout fishing. And we've had a few fingers recently. I compliment you for partnering with Swan Valley Sports Fish, because we just talked about that for an hour. And they're pleased with the work you do. So, this wonderful stuff. The only Thing that I, I question that this I picked up the other day, and you have, we have our ad, and you guys obviously put that ad in, which is wonderful. But how do we get more stuff about the Swan Valley? We got left out in this one. There's the stuff about we have to yes. pay, and we couldn't afford it. You know, it was learning. really interesting when, um, and thank you know, I, I thank Rick Wojcik's office for starting this whole travel Manitoba yep. thing, mm -hmm. um, because Minister Cullen was coming up, and and he contacted me and said, "Do you want to meet with him?" I said, "Yeah." So when he took that, I didn't know where it was going to go by giving him our tourism development plan until Travel Manitoba called me. It was always under our um, assumption that everything had to get funneled through Valley of the Mountains Tourism, Park Mount Tourism, Travel Manitoba, no. So they said, nope, you send us whatever you want, whenever you want, however you want. So this we may could have been in here for free? We, it depends. Not, there's a, there's a lot of paid advertising. The yeah, folks like are not. Cost, cost to guys, and I'm all in favor of this. This is mm -hmm. wonderful. Yep. But when you talk about the, our sled trails, our outstanding fishing, our and that's trails, the stuff we're working on with them. So directly, so all summer and anytime they have anything on their website or anything showing up at all, I'm just, for instance uh, Thunder Hill. We should, it should be in there that we have the most northern natural snow. So they are celebrating Thunder Hills. Did you know that Swan River actually has da da da? Did you know that Swan River no. has the most 18 hole golf course northern? And so they literally just don't know this information. And we just learned that the, the way we were supposed to be contacting and connecting with them is not true. Now we know we can connect and who we can connect directly Do you with. Travel to give them information. Emails? Because they send out it's emails. It's a beautiful magazine. But yeah, but they the send out emails weekly to people. And we've been mentioned a few times. The Ducks has been mentioned. Um, Buffalo Junction was mentioned in the top ten oh, restaurants to eat. Yeah. Things Can we like show that. our next edition of this one? We would hope. I'm edition. hoping. Yeah. I'm hoping. This, this, stuff, this is going all over Manitoba, too. Oh, so yeah. Great stuff. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, and the nice thing, too, with them coming up here, I mean, we've got the night of the third and all day of the fourth. Um, to tour them around. So we've got Colin Ferguson coming up, who's the CEO and President of Travel Manitoba. We've got uh, two different Vice Presidents coming up, one for strategy <coughs> and one for marketing. So those three I know are coming for sure, and we're going to drive them from one end to the other and borrow some communities in bloom, which was an amazing tour. It was a really good tour. Things you don't even realize are here, are here. It, yeah, everybody should do that tour at least once. So we're going to do that for a day and a half, and then there's that meeting that night for, for the public to meet with them. So we're pretty excited. I mean, it'll get us on the map a little bit more. They're paying attention. We think we've yelled out a map friend, and they're like, hey, what's going on there? So that's good. Can you give me other questions? No. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Next, we have the public hearing on Variation Order 3, 2017. I call the public hearing to order on Variation Application 3, 2017. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following variation application. Variate the side width setback of the party wall from 5 feet to 0 for the shared wall on the property described as Lot 9, SB 3212, 218-8000 South. The requirements of Section 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. I request all persons making representation of the hearing state your name and civic address. Council moves over to the hearing. I will hear to all persons present. I adjourn the hearing. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Deloria, resolved in order application 3 2017, very decide with setback of the party wall from 5 to 0 feet for the shared wall on the property located at Lot 9, SB 3213 to 18th Avenue South be approved. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, under uh, correspondence, we have the letter uh, regarding airport privatization. Really, our own airport is really not affected by that. That would be a proposal to privatize the major airports that are run by Transport Canada. So if any of the councillors are opposed to that, I guess you can write your own letter. I'll we'll go to the next letter from uh, Margaret Townsend regarding dogs. Is that passed along to Ken? <coughs> Ken's been away on all of these. Councillor Jacobson. Yeah, I, I heard about this, but uh, I think that also we need Ken to be looking a little bit more into some of the other areas of town too, besides this area. I see just over the last maybe year, year and a half, there's been more and more people being more relaxed with that bylaw. A few years ago when we changed the bylaw, people tightened up and, and they followed it. But just in the last little while, it's, it's getting worse and I see more dogs out running about and not being controlled by their owners while they're taking them out for walks. So I'd like to see something done about that. Councillors, don't worry. What's Ken's interaction been on this file? Has he has he scoped it out or anything? Has he has he gone and talked to the uh, people the complaint is against? Um, I will have to uh, talk to him. He's okay. I, I thought he was back today, but he's not back till Thursday. He'll be back in the office Thursday morning. So, so when, when he's on holidays, who covers for now? We don't have anybody on staff to cover for him. Maybe, maybe we can look at. And, and plus, he's all, he also only does bylaw part-time because mm -hmm. he drives the part-time. Maybe it's time to look at it full-time. Not only full-time, but maybe staggered hours, you know, where there would be a split shift or something, because, well, I mean, some of these things you, you're not going to catch till the dog sits inside when people are at work, and then it's in the evening when things like that happen. Or, and, and he has flexed his hours a few times to go down to a park in the mm -hmm. evenings and yeah. different places in town in the evenings. I have talked to Ken <coughs> about this, this address and the... Uh, he, does, he has told me he's been there at least a half a dozen times. And the dog is tied up or controlled or whatever. So if it wasn't, he would have, he would have done something. So every time he goes, it's it's just not the case. Council White, maybe a call to Mrs. Talbot to give us a call when the dog is up, and then we can get in touch right away with our, our staff. Could be that that could be the time that he's on the line. Yeah, well, at least we'll find that out. Like he's out right now and we'll see what he can do about it. Yeah, and when he does receive a call like that during the workday when he's here and he's not driving handy, he does go right out and check the situations yep. out, and that could be very well what happened those few times. He dealt with. I think this is uh, as part of one thing where we're starting to get into a, a whole bigger issue with our bylaw enforcement is that same thing with RCMP. The general public knows patrol hours, patrol routines of our bylaw people and the RCMP and we're just waiting until, as I think Councilor Glory said, things that we just stagger things a little bit more or, and even look at our bylaw enforcement uh, 
come up with a new strategy for that. So that might be something that the bylaw committee might need to look at for the next budget. Councilor And on the bylaw enforcement, I know we, we have a bylaw enforcement officer, but and correct me if I'm wrong, but we met with the RCMP, it's got to be over a year ago now, and I asked the question about where is the delineation between bylaws that they enforce and don't enforce, and the response was, we enforce all of your bylaws, tell us which ones you want, and we were to send them all. So I mean, in cases where Ken is on holidays or or uh, they're not around, can we tell Mrs. Townsend to phone the RCMP? I mean, that's... That's really who we're paying a million dollars to uh, enforce our bylaws. I think no, that's just kind of that's yeah, I asked them and they, they said every... I know Ken did go have a meeting with them to discuss that. Mm -hmm. And I'll get him to refresh our meeting. Okay. What was said. I think the message to Mrs. Tamlin should also be that we're quite concerned. We appreciate her letting us know. Because the dog attacks are Ken. Holy smokes. I, our, obviously, the RCB should be involved prior to that happening. In my mind. Was this put, I guess, my question so that we don't drop it now? Why this wasn't put in on our uh, complaint system that goes into the proper people that came here? I have no problem with it coming here, but don't we have a process for that? I guess probably because this was an actual letter where most, most complaints are. Okay. I think Ken instructed this this person to write a letter to council because there was nothing happening. There was just a happening. You know, both sides were different, and Ken said she basically said, "Where can I go now?" Write a letter to council. So, what is the penalty for uh, dog turning loose? It's just a fine. There's a fine. There's a fine, there but there, a fine. The, I guess how far does it go where they? They, if they keep finding it and there's a nuisance animal, what's, what happens if, uh, if the law keeps getting flaunted? Uh, like, look at her letter, it's like it's like they're waiting until when Ken goes home and then they let the dog out to, there's no, Ken can't catch them in the act. Right, I think the bylaw is a maximum of $250 or something, so and that would be enough, hopefully, several times that would be expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Ken will take up the matter. So we go to item six one, the fire department purchase of positive pressure ventilation replacement. Uh, decision paper is there. My question is budget, because I don't remember the money for that. Uh, we actually have a resolution that will use the um, fire truck reserve fund to pay for that. Because the fire check reserve fund has money in it and it's for any fire. It covers the entire cost. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Any other questions? Councilor Moore. Um, did the fire chief look at, uh, when I was looking at these quotes and stuff like that, um, he went with one vendor. Um, did he look at separating the two separate fans, one, the cheaper one from one vendor and the cheaper one that meets the requirements from the other vendor? Or did he just go as a package deal with on the point system? I'd have to ask him that. Because there's a significant amount of money that can be saved if he separated it from the two, if he was willing to wait like the four weeks versus the two weeks on some on one of those fans. If he separated the vendors and went with one from the other. So. I can ask him tomorrow. Do we want to table the motion? It doesn't care that it happened right now. I understand that fan's been broken for over a month now, so. But I yeah, might need it tonight. What's your wish, Councilor? <coughs> I'll go with the fire chief's recommendation. <coughs> <coughs> so we have the motion moved by Councilor Delore, second by Councilor Jacobs, and resolved the Thomas Long River Fire Department. You're authorized to purchase the positive pressure ventilation fans from Seahawks Specialized Truck Service for $9,063.42 and further be resolved that the fire truck reserve fund be reserved to cover the cost of this purchase. Discussion? 
favor of the care. We have the motion moved by Councillor Delorey, second by Councillor Jacobson, to resolve the proposed subdivisions of Lot 3 and 4, Plan 23396, Dauphin Land Titles Office, numbered by Manitoba Municipal Government Community and Regional Planning Branch, as filed 45517-7387, be hereby approved. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. <coughs> Okay, you have the superintendent works report. Any questions to Derek on the superintendent works report? Councilor Morio. Um, Derek, how are we going with the planning on the 6th Avenue West drainage back there, the capital project? Uh, the schedule will probably start after our asphalt works is complete, so it'll be an October job. But. Uh, we're just having, we've had some issues with ordering the, the manual with the furniture. <clears throat> and then with the water flushing, uh, imagine uh, you guys will be using our new app for push notification and all that stuff to get the word out. Uh, yeah, the, the app or? The app or, and the notice on there. Because I looked today and it's not, 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 not there, so I can get we've got this fancy tool memory. that we should be using. And then especially like if there's a daily app, like if it's whatever line that's just a, a section of town, then yeah, up down it. So, Councilor White. Uh, Derek, I know you've been in the exchange, you know, the exchange has written a letter to Sean Finn, the executive VP of CM, relative to the blockage in this culvert down there, which floods out, I don't know, 10, 15 homes. Any response yet? Uh, they did, they, he sent me, I can't remember his name, but yes, they did get back to me, and I'm emailing them pictures this week. Did they have they a solution? No, no, they didn't propose any solution. I'm basically proposing solutions to them. And we'll clean it up, send them a bill, or split it, whatever. Well, that we, have, we haven't even gotten there yet to see if it'll cost share or if they're going to take it under their responsibility. But uh, that's a perennial thing that has it's been going on for ten years. Yeah. I think. Uh, the, the, the Dale residence over there, we're going to have a look at it there that we had to approve. Uh, any, you were hoping to have that done last year and or this year? We were in... It's ugly. I, I, it, it is, and uh, I guess it, it just falls on the priority right now where we've got three or four uh, areas being done that are, that are linked to asphalt paving, so we're getting as many curb and gutter repairs done prior to asphalt coming, and mm -hmm. then we can start doing those requests. But that is the first request to be done after we're finished our, our asphalt patching. Are you hopeful it might be done this fall? Yes, since I said it would be done That's last year. Yes, thank it's you. It's a priority. Councilor Jacobson. 40 water shutoffs? <laughs> yeah. According to our uh, yeah, according to our, our policy and our our the time that we allow people to to pay their bills on the June bills, right now is the time that uh, that they have to pay their bills or they get shut off. So, do they uh, have any of those forty made attempts to pay the bills in partial, or do they have to pay them in full? What is uh, I, I can't remember what the bylaw or the states, but what what are how lenient are we with that? Uh, they're making them now. Now that we, they're, they're hearing that thing, people are getting shut off and we're actually turning valves, we're getting lots of calls of, can I just pay half? So we're going to, with the this amount, we're going to have to say, okay, you get, we're probably going to come up with you get 14 more days. And uh, if it's not, then we will shut you off. But it's people with families and, and there's a potential for just an ugly mess, but uh, for lack of a better term. <laughs> but uh, we we do we we just can't set the precedent that we'll just let it go forever. It's kind of you know we we set that policy and it always ends up taxpayers writing it off in the end because we can't collect that money. Council cycle. So from year to year, is this number spiked or is this kind of the norm for this time of year? This is definitely high. Uh, 
I couldn't even say what the average is, but we would have 15 or 12 would be more of a, a number. It's definitely high. Is there any way to pinpoint what's contributing to this? I can't. I guess I, to be honest, I, I've just found this number uh, uh, would have been today. I knew it was 40, so I, I wasn't here last week. Susan knew about it last week. Darren knew, but uh, you know they're just carrying through with with shutoffs. We, with people who are, are saying, I can pay by next Tuesday. I can pay by next Wednesday. What we're doing is putting them to the bottom of the list because we can't shut them all off in an afternoon. It's going to take days. Uh, so if they're saying that they can pay by next Tuesday, we're putting them at the bottom of the list so that once they get there, they've paid up and they get off the list by the time it's done. So the people who are trying to say, we're going to pay, we're going to, you know, who we're collecting from, they probably will not get shut off. <clears throat> so is their bill escalated? that much more that they can't afford or are the numbers hardly changed that you can see? No, I was talking to Susan today and it's it's pretty constant. People have trouble paying bills and it's uh, it's nothing I guess it's it's higher than average. There's people that that aren't paying their bills that have in the past, but I, I don't know what the reason is. Uh, there's like I talked to a person today with a two hundred and four dollar bill and but I think what Council Sample is asking, since the water rate increase, has their bill increased substantially as to what the cause of them not paying their bill? Uh, if it is that reason, they're not. that was not part of the conversations I've had with them right now. But like that it's an increased amount. Looking at their history of bills, there's not the, you don't see that jump. i I got to be honest, I never looked at the, the history of the, the accounts that I talked to. Councilor White. What is the policy? Brief for them. Uh, they get, from the initial bill, uh, they get a month to pay, and then we send out a, a letter of that they're past due. In two weeks, we give them a warning that a month from now, if you don't pay, you're going to get shut off. And then when that comes, we s basically that's a... Two and a half months. Yeah, we, it is. It's, it's the June bills. So mid-June, they would have gotten these bills. It's the beginning of September is when the shutoff date comes. But there's three different warnings that we send out to those people saying, you're past due. You're still past due. If you don't pay by this date, you're shut off. And then another one in there, you're still past due. If you don't pay by the same date, you're going to get shut off. And then we give them a shutoff notice, and then they get shut off. So there's so, so is I don't know is it in the past that we shut people off? Yes. Like, like maybe we always threaten them never do it. Now we're doing it. Uh, no, it's not that we never did it. We've we've always had a list list of turnoffs. Uh, that's why we repair our curb stops, make sure they're in working order. Um, that actually answers the question I had. So thanks. No, I'm sorry. Don't worry. Six. Fifth Avenue lift station. How's that going? I haven't heard much about that this morning. Is it on schedule, behind schedule, ahead of schedule? Right now, on our last construction meeting, uh, we are about 10 days behind schedule, but that can easily be brought back up easily because uh, there's so much, so much prep time in those critical stages that are allowed. He can, he can make that back in no time. But it's just where we're at is uh, I believe on the gen set order is, is where they're at right now. I, I think it's going to be here in a, a few weeks, but once that's in and ready to go, they'll start really, uh, and once the building is built, they'll start building the MCCs and the electrical starts, and then that's when we know the date of our critical shutdown so we can go tell everyone in the area this is the night it's going to happen. This seems later in the year than when we did the haze on my memory serves me right here. Are we going to run into issues with it getting cold and snow and stuff? No, no, no. we're at, we're actually right on track with okay. it. It was done in October. Okay. The main shutdowns. On the handy van storage building, it says construction is halted. Any other movement on there? 
Uh, again, uh, we're just waiting for the mechanical contractor to to bring in the natural gas lines. And uh, I believe the heaters are being hung, and the electrician needs to re re uh, reinstall the panel. The garage doors need to be installed, and then we wait for Hydro to hook us up. When was the project supposed to be done by? Was there a due date? I believe November 15th. We basically got the year to do it. We want it prior to freeze up so we can get everything back in. How is it looking? Good. Yeah. It looks good as long as what they're telling me is true that like things are starting to roll back. We're starting to receive the. There was back orders and then they sent it and the material was defective so they had to send it back and send new stuff. And it was a, Mess in August. So you're going to keep the pressure on them? So yes, it has to be done this? several weeks before freezing. Sounds the warning. Um, will you give us a, a mini report on how the shredding pilot project went? As far as did we have money ahead, money behind, how how much did we do, or is it well, is it good? It, you, you don't even I, I catch you kind of off guard because I just you made a little comment on it, but I'll let you uh, maybe next meeting. You can let us know how sure. how the uh, shredding went. Sure. If it's something we're going to continue doing, does it cost us more? All that kind of stuff. Question on manpower and public works. Now that the summer students have gone, I understand we've got a couple of people maybe on a long-term kind of disability. Are you short-staffed in public works? So we have. Uh uh, uh, three three guys short from several years ago, two years ago, and that's just that's just where we're at. And I understand, you know, we're not we're not gonna if we, if we hire someone back and they come to work with uh, wording in our CBA, we may not be able to get. Okay, anything else, Council Gloria? When's the papers come? The end of September. End of September, okay. It'll be an LP on the 18th, is what they told me, a week there. And we're after LP. Any other questions? If not, the motion by Councilor Gloria, second by Councilor Jacobson, to resolve the superintendent of the works report we received. Discussion? In favor? Okay, you have the fire department report. Any questions to Julie on that one? And you also, Councilor, I see in the town there's two uh, 1421 Bridge South. There's a charge to that uh, false alarm. I take it that's not the first time they've been to that location. So the fire chief is exercising right. Yes. You also have the minutes from the management meetings of the 17th and the 24th. Any questions? Did you name on those? Just a comment. Uh, I see our. Mr. Benita has found us $93,000 from the Royal Bank that had been put in somebody else's account, and he just earned his, his salary really quickly finding that. Please thank him for us. The motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Delore, is all the fire department report for August 2017 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. okay, council members report. Council Morio. Um, this period, um, I attended the, um, the TLE Lend signing agreement with uh, yourself and Councilor Friesen and Julie. Um, with that, it was a good ceremony, with, uh, followed up by a good uh, meal. As a celebration, it was also surprising to know that uh, we are the only municipality jurisdiction in Manitoba that has two urban reserves now. So, um, just goes to a testament of the good planning and stuff that the previous council, which is most of you uh, folks, have put into the first agreement with Club Sab property and stuff like that. So they're looking to uh, increase and move forward with other properties as they uh, see opportunities. Um, also had a day uh, touring with the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District. Uh, 
toured around the valley uh, at some of their projects that they've completed or uh, on the go, uh, which was very informative, along with uh, other councillors from the valley. And uh, we ended a day off with a barbecue there. And then I, um, over the weekend, I took part into the, the Driving For You uh, community fundraiser response for uh, formal motors and uh, Youth Soccer Association. And while I was there chit-chatting, um, they informed me that uh, they will be proceeding this fall with the construction of their shelter. So uh, there's been some alterations. It's going to be bigger than what they planned, but they're going to need some cost savings, some others. So they'll be, they, I guess, uh, they told me they're already in discussion with uh, Ron and Patty regarding uh, location and all that stuff. So they'll be uh, building that uh, structure this fall at the soccer grounds. That's all I have. Councilor Bellary. Um, just a couple things. First one is the uh, variation hearing we had tonight. I think that identifies a pro an issue that w we have with our bylaw because we allow a multifamily residence to be built there, but we made them get a very, but our but the zoning doesn't allow for you to have zero setback. So the building is allowed to be there, but we but oh we're going to allow you to build this. But Give us 300 bucks so we can uh, change a rule rule for you, change the setback from five to zero. But I think that identifies a, a real problem. It's not like variation should be very infrequent as far as it's a special circumstance that that. And I mean, if you're allowed to build a, a multifamily house on this property without any other uh, variations, then. <coughs> so our zoning should allow for it because obviously you're going to have an adjoining wall or a party wall as it's called. So I, I think we, we need to uh, look into changing our zoning bylaw on that one because uh, it just really struck me as odd that that was the only variation we had to do for that property as far as if that pro thing was allowed to be built there. So I don't know how the rest of the council feels but I'd, I'd like if we could direct the administration to suggest some rewording for the zoning bylaw to to fix that because I think there's something wrong there. I don't know if the rest of you guys feel the same way, but um, and I know there was also a complaint over the summer about the and I think it's one area of town that always gets hit with this when the when the weekend lands when the, when a long weekend lands and they end up end up missing their recycling pickup. What would it take for and I understand we don't control the recycling pickup, but can, can we talk to the uh, lines and see if they can somehow do a double pickup like we do, or see how we can shift that, or even if, or even if they can somehow shift the days because it's always the same. Even if they don't want to do a double pickup, maybe it has to shift uh, so that it's not always the same area of town that has a month's worth of recycling building up every time there's a long weekend. Yeah, we can definitely yeah. talk to him. Okay. Okay. Just I don't just bring, brainstorm with them and see what you can come back with there. Okay. Uh, that's everything for me. Thanks for taking some. I don't know, Councilor Delore is still one of my pieces of thunder, anyways. But uh, the recycling thing, for sure. I had a couple of people complain about uh, the fact that they wait up to one month, as you know, yesterday. So, but we can work on that with that group. Would be. Would be, would be swell, especially if they could follow maybe like a garbage schedule or something like that, because we managed to do that with the garbage schedule. So, other than that, for me, uh, just a few complaints with the bylaw enforcement thing and with RCMP, but we'll be meeting with the RCMP here, I believe, in, in the next couple of weeks, so there's some issues there. Over, over the summer months, I had a chance to spend a long time at the skate park, not skateboarding or anything like that myself, <laughs> but my son has spent a lot of time. And, I sat there and I watched, you know, we do have a great facility there, but it's pretty disheartening to see some of the vandalism that goes in that uh, facility here, especially in just in the last couple of weeks, from spray painting to, to whatever, like it's, and, and there's often days I go there and it's just absolutely a mess. The, the kids don't use the garbage facilities and, and leave their, you know, broken stuff and everything behind. And our parks guys go down, they, Clean that up, I think, once a week, but it's it's pretty disheartening. I'm gonna talk with Kyle a little bit about it, but 
it's it's too bad what the, those kids are doing to a facility that was actually built for them. Kind of vandalism comes from this place, sir. Sorry. You said a great deal of vandalism. Well, there was spray painting, like they're uh, okay. using their spray cans for okay. vandalizing the, or marking the mm -hmm. the, uh, the facility there with mm -hmm. everything that you can yeah. imagine. Right. And there's young kids there and older kids, and they have to work together, but it certainly doesn't look it doesn't look good. Who did deputize you? <laughs> Some of those kids are bigger than me. <laughs> Most are. <laughs> Thank you. Councilor Sackle. Not too much to report. Had some discussions with uh, Derek and Darren just about a possible relocation with a uh, new structure going up of a, of a hydrant. And then just a little meeting we had today with Derek and, and David on. Uh, the development kit committee on the local improvement by law, but that's it for me. Councilor Friesen. Um, I had a library meeting a week ago. I don't know if any of you are interested in numbers, but um, in the library in July, 3,700 books were circulated. That was here. And 567 in the needle. I have all the stats if anybody's interested in what's going in and what's uh, being circulated. Susan has a uh, traveling library, so she gathers up books and goes all over town and to senior centers. She takes books and puzzles and audio books, and um, they're very busy, which is a great thing. Um, Thursday afternoon, there's four of us heading to the Peace Gardens. Uh, resolution went through for three, so uh, we resumed the news picking up the fourth person. Um, they've asked us to do something called a showcase while we were there, and they want it on our landfill and our recycle. So we've got some pictures, and uh, we'll have a write up on our landfill and our recycle. Um, the town guys, the arena guys, thank you to Hugh and his crew, uh, put up the Communities in Blue posts in our flower beds with our sign that say these are our Communities in Blue. So I'd just like to thank Hugh. He was um, more than happy to do that for us. And I also attended the TLC uh, meeting and luncheon. Had a, Calvin Campbell is an awesome speaker. He just got up there and talked like he'd been doing it all his life. So I must comment on Calvin. He's a great guy. I enjoyed the welcome prayer and I enjoyed the welcome song. Didn't break into the lunch with these guys. I had to come to work, so I didn't have lunch. No, he was a good lunch. What about it? The lunch at Johnny's? Yeah. Johnny's gave us lunch. Gave them lunch, the judges. Not us. And Jordan and Menchuk gave the judges uh, separate pizza place. So thank you to them too. Councilor White. I don't know how to turn that noise off. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, I, I want to thank Phil for inviting me to the Communities of Blue and the judges and members luncheon to talk about our community and whatever things we do. So that was interesting. We've had a couple of Prairie Mountain Health meetings recently. I think we're getting close to 10 new docks in two years. Four or five more will be announced next week or so to we'll make that 10 number. Uh, the uh, formal fundraiser for, not the formal fundraiser, the formal providing the cars and everything for the kids to raise money. What a great concept. Just get the car, drive for five minutes, to 20 bucks towards the community. It's a shame they couldn't get more people out with that. I enjoyed that. I met with uh, Chelsea Cook. She's a young lady who's organizing the harm reduction or prevention, overdose prevention process. And there'll be another meeting coming up soon over that. And I think that's important that we be aware of that. Uh, I want to thank uh, the RISE people for partnering with Swan Valley Sport Fish. Uh, I just came from that meeting there prior to coming here. And they're excited about working with RISE. And I think it's important to work with community groups. So uh, that's a good, good sign. I got to the end of the Swan Lake Conservation District tour. I missed the tour, but I got the free lunch. School, school teachers, and I got the chance to chat. And one of the guys came out for this, they sure appreciate you coming, Councilor. So, uh, even though I got there, it was over, but at least I got there. 
and at the re uh, request of uh, council, I went to Kalmahan and uh, we've repurposed the, the metal thing. sign. It's got very expensive, but I said, we don't need a metal sign, we just need a picture, you know, the kids or whatever, and he's a hundred bucks. So I have not yet talked to Mr. Mendel, but uh, hopefully our council would think 50 bucks wouldn't be too much, and maybe the, the school division would do the other 50 bucks. Uh, it might be 200 by the time I put it in a frame, I'm guessing, but so it's not an exorbitant fee within that. The original was metal, and that was crazy expensive, but for something to put up in the school or the arena, wherever the, I think wherever the school wants to put it because it's their cause, I'm assuming we're still interested in being part of that process. It wasn't much money. Thank you. I think that was a good idea. I think that's a good idea. <coughs> <coughs> Treaty land entitlement ceremony is a very uh, interesting ceremony. And uh, in that matter, I had a call and an email uh, today from one of my old friends from the university, he happens to be the land manager for Buffalo Point First Nation in southeastern Manitoba. And we're having a conference here t tomorrow and Friday. They asked me to speak on land development. So I agreed to do that. So he hasn't got back to me. He should be in town to me. Well, you're there. Are you done, Worship? Yeah. This Buffalo Point is the one where the, where uh, somebody gave them the provincial park and uh, some tree land in, in Buffalo Point. Yeah. I think it's a I think the province if that's the same place I'm going, I'm going to guess it is. The province is challenging that decision to give park land to a TLE because there's something hovering over us with the Wilma Lake land over there too. And I went to a oh, th me. yeah I went with Phil I forgot Phil thank you to the Historical Society dinner, free dinner, and uh, all the displays are wonderful. There's, gee, there must be 300 people there, right? There's a really good turn. It wasn't really good. I forgot to mention that. Well, I said a few. It's getting out of hand. I've got to go to the museum. There's too many meetings we've done for the The museum was a great place to go. It was. OK, Julian, CEO. We have our G5 meeting come on, coming up um, October 2nd. So I was just wondering if anybody had some agenda items for me. I was emailed them to me. Um, also, I booked the, uh, the Legion room at the Veterans Community Hall for that uh, for that evening. And um, I believe it was Dwayne who had, um, had somebody email me for some more information about perhaps uh, doing the summer part of it. You have to speak up, I'm sorry. Um, for the G5 meeting, mm -hmm. you had uh, sent me, or um, had someone send me an email to we request did. information about perhaps doing the supper. Yep, yeah. I forwarded that to them. Okay, do you know if that's going to be a for sure thing, or? I, I can't comment, I don't know. Okay. Be, so Holly would be the contact person who I'm okay. sure would So I can just email her and yeah, see if it's a number of people, for can you do it or not? Uh, shoot, I would have brought that up to tonight's meeting. Yeah, so if anybody can forward me some um, agenda items, or if you have any ideas now, um, just let me know so I can start getting that agenda ready. Um, the hotel rooms for um, AMM and Brandon um, have been booked at the Best Western. I just received an email because we've been on the way to West for the last two years. Um, so we'll be at the Best Western. I think we stayed there once before. So the one on the North Hill? Yeah. yeah. What's the date? That's um, the road. Yeah. November uh, 27th, 28th, and 29th. That's the, the convention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Last one for election. November when? 27th, 28th, 29th. I thought it was okay. Last year was. Missed year. Last year was. Um, Patty and I are working on um, bringing a, a trainer in to do some staff training for um, for managers and supervisors. Um, perhaps this fall, we're just looking into our budget lines to make sure that we have enough uh, money in uh, our personal uh, professional development budget accounts. Um, but this would be training for approximately. 11 staff members so um, when we send someone away for training 
you know, it costs money for the course, then it's hotel rooms and meals and, and everything. So this is actually quite uh, cost effective to bring some money. So we thought we would try to plan it. And, Go ahead. Sounds like a great idea. Did you talk to any of the other municipalities if they wanted to pay back and train some of their staff? Yeah, that is a, that is a good idea. We we have talked about it. We haven't done that yet, um, but that is a good idea. Well, I think that's yeah. a great idea, and especially yeah. if other municipalities have staff and they think you know it could mm -hmm. be a yeah. good savings for everybody. Yeah. So that's something that perhaps will come up this fall sometime. And uh, just a reminder that the office here will be closed on September 12th from 12 noon till, till the end of the day and then September 13th all day uh, for staff training. And um, I may need somebody to attend the property tax sale, which is September 13th at 2 p.m. Uh, here in the office, there's one property left on the list and if it's not redeemed, they'll just need somebody to attend that sale from me, so anyone of you will be so I'll let you know about that. Okay. Okay. And that's, that's it for me. Okay. Thank you. Continue on with bylaws. We have the water and sewer uh, service bylaw review. Uh, you were meeting, is that what you were meeting on tonight? No, no, this was a sure, white lights thing. Sure. Uh, I had the opportunity to review the bylaw and as it stands right now, anything in sewer from the house to the middle of the road is the landowner's problem. And we said that if the road is where the problem is, which is caused by trucks, traffic, whatever, and the town as a whole is causing the problem on the road, I don't see that as being, in my personal opinion, I don't see that as being the responsibility of the landowner. We've caused the problem, the community has brought the problem. So, up to up to the edge, if that's just stuff plugging it, absolutely. But if it's out there on the road, why are we making the landowner responsible for that? And if it's been done, it's crunched by heavy traffic or trucks, and it's caused by the community, I think we should pick that up. That's assuming that the... Pardon? I guess that's assuming that the traffic has caused the damage. Yeah. Like we have old tar paper lines on Centennial, and like some are still perfectly round, but it's the actual mat pipe material that is simply just deteriorated. So, uh, and there's freeze thaw and movement and other pipe materials, I guess. The, I think the reason for the, for the bylaw being the way it is, is there's no physical point on that line that we can change responsibility. Because once we say it's the property line, like they can argue that until we get a Manitoba land surveyor in saying this point right here is is the point because they can they can argue that no oh, no that's a line there. I'm pretty sure <clears throat> from the guys that I've you know talked to that have looked at this bylaw for the past several decades, that's the reason why the sewer line is all property owners, is because there's no physical point on that line. But we, we use the water for the water feeds to the shut off, is that it? The shut off? That's, that's pe pending the fact that the sh shut off is on the property line, which if you want if you, to, to take your example further, if you got a, a real uh, disturber of a uh, property owner, you could say, well, that shut off's not, and you'd have to get a mantle land surveyor in to prove that the shut off is on the property line. Right. We, we state that the, the shutoff valve is the point. We don't say the property owner. No, about it. I just read it. We have, it does say mm -hmm. in the bylaw, it may not even be in this bylaw, it might even be a, a schedule, but it says the shutoff valve to the main is the property of the town. Yeah, find it. Down. So could you not use that in the same wordage? Say from the property main, you can in your sewer line would line up anything. Well, it's 5A. The town of Swanover shall pay the cost and maintain the waterworks service pipes from the waterworks mains to the nearest point of the street boundary. So that's the property line. Right. To the premises service. It doesn't say anything about the about the shutoff. There is there is wording. I've re I've read it. I've shown it. I've printed it out to people saying it's the shutoff valve to the mains. But uh, uh, we can do that. Yeah, we can. 
It's whatever. You, it's been there since 1996. I know it doesn't we, mean it's bad. It doesn't mean it's good. I know this has been in front of council this bylaw before on this exact same issue. And so are you saying there's another bylaw that deals with this then? No, it's wording on the, whether it's a policy okay. or just in the fees. Uh, I would have to look at it. I would have to go look for it, but we do have it in writing saying the physical curb stop. It's, it, in my mind, it seems odd that we're having the property owner assume responsibility for something that's even on his property that it's on our property. Can I suggest that we kick this back to the Water Sewer Committee to review the bylaw? Yeah, because there's a couple other changes that I want to consider on here. And then they can bring that back. Yes. No, I have no problem with that. At least we're discussing it. Yeah, because we'll, we can go around and around here all night That's long, true. but uh, take it to the committee. Who's, who's on that committee? I don't know. Uh, uh, Jason Delory, Lance, and Jason Sacco. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, well, let's set a, meet, a date then. If we're not going to talk about anymore, let's set a date. When do you guys want to meet? Then you can review the policies and all that stuff so that it's all in alignment, and then you can bring it back <coughs> to the council. Do you guys want to meet for the 17th council meeting? We meet at 5.30 or something? The 19th, you mean? Yeah. Oh, 19th, oh, 19, sorry. That should, be, should work for me? Yeah. 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 I'm not here on the 19th. Oh, you're not here? Okay, we, can't, we only need well, one here. Well, it depends on the next uh, resolution you guys pass. Oh, that's just... <laughs> that's the next resolution. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> um, okay, well then how about the third... Six thirty. Six. Six. Okay. Because they took the camera over and they left the camera right down. And they said it was perfect, right out to the middle of the road, and it narrows it to the middle of the road for whatever reason. And then, bingo! I'm saying, well, gee, that doesn't seem like your problem. It seems like our problem. Yeah, we've had that discussion many times. Yeah. Okay. Continue on with the. Bylaw. We have the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Delore. Resolved that Bylaw 6 2017 being a bylaw to provide for the expenditure of borrowing of funds to upgrade the mechanical piping and pumping and fully replace the electrical components plus installation of additional monitoring equipment at the 6th Avenue wastewater pumping station located 314 6th Avenue North. Be read right a second time. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, seconded by Councillor Delore, resolved that bylaw 6 2017, being a bylaw to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds to upgrade the mechanical piping and pumping and fully replace electric components plus installation of additional monitoring equipment at 6th Avenue Wastewater Pump Station, located at 314 6th Avenue North, where we have a third time in the past. Discussion? All in favor? All in favor. Okay, council has a copy of the accounts. Any questions to Julie on any of the accounts? And we have the motion moved by Councilor White, second by Councilor Sackle. Resolve the council is followed and hereby approved for payment. General accounts will check 21132 to 21231 for a total of 489468 and payroll account from check 40. 45 to 4016 for a total of 257,297.97. No questions to Julie? Um, actually, uh, 21183, Delage Landing Financial Services. Two payments to them, though. Yeah, there's uh, one there's for the aquatic center. Oh, the two office. photocopters. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Carried. Uh, the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle, resolve the building inspector 
be authorized to attend the accessibility and detail workshop in held November 23rd in Winnipeg. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. And this is moving forward with the legislation that the province has put in place regarding an accessibility plan for the town. Motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Saffer, was all the building inspector be authorized to attend the new Home, home Warranty Act workshop being held September 27th in Portage and Prairie. Discussion? In favor? The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Saffer, was all the building inspector be authorized to attend. Manitoba Energy Code for Building Workshop being held October 23rd and 24th in Winnipeg. Discussion? Yeah. Um, seeing as we're investing quite a bit of money into this, and I know this is kind of unique in the way that this employee is, is a contractor. Normally, we had talked about return of service when we send people away for professional development like this. And I, I know he's got his contract set for this year, but uh, can we look at including some sort of return of service? Because I, I think it's good that we do that with all our employees, even even if it is a two or three day thing. And, and I guess you'll have to come up with some sort of schedule based on the amount of, of training invested into them. All in favor of the resolution? White, second by Councillor Saff, will resolve that Amanda Landles be hired as full time municipal RCMP clerk effective August 29th, 2017. Discussion? All in favor? <coughs> the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Saff, will resolve the financial statements for the month ended July 31st be adopted as received. Any questions on the financial statements or comments? Everything is good? Yeah. Nobody, no department has brought up any issues. I think everything is looking good so far. How did the tax come in? Is much all up to date? Um, there's a long list of people that are late, in, but that's not, um, we're still collecting, so uh, nothing different than like, prior years. All in favor of the resolution? Carry. The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen. Resolved that Superintendent Works Derek Poole and Utility Operator Jordan Brooks. You're authorized to attend the Western Canada Water Conference and Trade Show in Saskatoon held September 19th to 22nd. Discussion? Um, yeah, just wondering, uh, Derek, like, what are we going to get out of this? Uh, this goes towards uh, utility operator CEUs, which were doubled their, their requirements have been doubled this past winter. Uh, so Jordan will collect those CEUs. I'm not an operator, so I don't get the CEUs, but uh, uh, I am planning a, a meeting with Viola, I believe it's called, for uh, just solutions on our lagoon is kind of the highlight of my my meetings there. There's a whole lot of networking with uh, with Nexum, the company that we have been talking about our lagoon, and they've been talking about a council tour and that, but also a competitor Viola regarding the MBBR uh, treatment lagoon. I have a meeting scheduled with them to attend that for sure, and along with the networking that happens through those days. All in favor? Okay. Now the motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, whereas the Town of Swan River has a utility fund operating deficit of 312786 for 2016. He had resolved the Town of Swan River submit an application to the Public Utilities Board proposed to recover this deficit through working capital surplus. Discussion? 
Right. Can you explain how working capital <coughs> surplus works? Uh, basically, we're required to have. Uh, oh, how does that work? Terry here too. Yeah, Terry can do it very, very well. Just in a nutshell, I guess we're required to have. Uh, I guess losing my terminology. Twenty percent of our. There's a formula. Yes, it's how you get working, working capital surplus is your tangible assets minus. It's a it's a formula that I just cannot remember. I'm just not an accountant, but uh, it basically a formula that you get, and that number has to be 20% of our expenditures. That's the minimum it can be. So the province requires us to carry that. We have, I believe, just under 600,000. So, because this number is not an actual number. Of, of money, according to piece yeah. evidence. So, but the working capital surplus is all—it's not—it's not actual money we have sitting in the bank, correct? No, no, because this was this was not nearly this amount before. Correct. Okay, this it's, it's not an, it's not an actual it's not coming. It's, it's not like a it's not like nominal surplus that we think of in the in the normal operating budget when we actually have. Right, it's money. not like we overspent. Yeah, and, and I'm not so much concerned with the overspending because I know that number isn't the actual number, but the but where we're taking it from to pay that off isn't actual dollars either. Correct. Okay. All in favor? Motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, who's on the Song Valley Debt Services District Audit had the financial statement be received. Discussion? All in favor? Motion moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Resolve the following building permit applications to be received. Kramer Colfart, 178 Slaughter River Drive, fence, $2,800. Living Word Ministries, 224 9th Avenue North. Inspections reports, $15,000. Karina Wood, 122 4th Avenue West, fence, $8,000. Jackie Sigurdsson, 419 11th Avenue North, garage, $15,000. Darren McKay, 305 13th Avenue South House and garage, $160,000. Darren McKay, 307, 13th Avenue South House and Garage, $160,000. 5788472 Manitoba Limited, uh, 626 Main Street, renovations, $22,000. Collins Lawn River, 440 Dolly Road, renovations, $95,000. Aaron Poole, 457 Laveron Dairy Bay, fence, $5,000. Kevin Fish, Fisher, 420 11th Avenue South, renovations, $5,000. Jeremy Hoffert, 407 4th Avenue North, debt $800. Discussion? Councilor Morio, then Councilor. Um, why would we need a building permit for inspection reports? What is that? That's be my question, too. What is that about? Where is the word? For Living Word Ministries. Ministry. Is it the second one? I've never seen that before. Second. Inspection reports fifteen thousand dollars. Living Word Ministries. I have no idea. That was the daycare. Yeah. No, that was that's. Uh, no, that's. The oh, daycare. that's the daycare. the daycare. I know they did some rentals, but. Uh, rentals in there for the dorm. Yeah. Okay, and a dorm in there. But well, why is it charge? No. Why why is it need a building permit for for inspection report? Can you find out about this one? Yeah. Yep. Okay. We'll go through it until we get back to this one. All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle. Uh, resolved that pursuant to section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council going to committee. <coughs> All in favor? 